I'm Todd Halfpenny. Um, th firstly, thanks for coming along. There were three other really good talks scheduled at the same time, so I'm just pleased anyone's here. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, mobilising your Salesforce applications. This is really for your, your business critical apps, ones that are dead important to your business, um, entitled Only the Paranoid Mobile Apps Survive. Um, so I'm happy to take questions throughout, just feel free to put your hand up, or there'll be a question session at the end, um, I think, as with the other talks. Uh, if I could quickly ask about the audience breakup. Uh, devs, how many devs? Please raise your hand. Got a few. Uh, people who class themselves as admins. No admins? Oh, no, I've scared them all away. Oh, a couple. Business analysts. Business analysts. OK, lovely. So I'll try and, try and hone the talk into those kind of the areas as much as I can. Um, to, to cater for you all. Um, so my name's Todd Halfpenny. Um, yeah, did get teased a bit, but not too much because I'm ginger, so that took the brunt of the teasing. Um, and I work for a company called Mobile Caddy, um, and we have uh, a Salesforce partner, have an app on the App Exchange, and really that makes up part of our SDK for uh, designing, building mobile applications for Salesforce, and then managing them and monitoring them ongoing throughout their life cycle. Uh, what have I called it up here? An enterprise toolkit. That's that's a better line for it, isn't it? Uh, myself, I've been with Mobile Caddy for coming up two years now, and before that, I was working in uh, mobile operators for 13 years, so uh, T-Mobile EE in UK and Europe. Um, and although lunchtime hugs were pretty good, they couldn't they couldn't really match up to this, which is what I get now every lunchtime. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, not too bad at all. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today, like I said, about mobile. So let's start off with a dictionary definition of mobile. Mobile is a decorative structure that is suspended so as to turn free. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, that's better. Immobile, to be able to move or be moved freely or easily. Um, and when we talk about mobile in uh, business applications, what we really want to be talking about is apps that if they stop working, then actually your, your businesses stop working. If they're not running, then your, your users, your field engineers, your sales staff, whoever it is, can no longer do their job. And that's money that's just going down the toilet. Um, building mobile apps that are, that are strong enough to, to withstand business use and, and various scenarios that you get is hard. It is, it is really tough. Um, it's also risky, because if you get it wrong, then your users can't, can't work. Um, and that's money just, just disappearing. And it's also something that, that's going to happen um, throughout a lifetime. So you don't just deliver an app and then you forget about it. You deliver an app and then you've got it, um, you've got it forever, hopefully. The longer you have it, the, the cheaper it becomes in the end, I suppose. Um, there's many benefits to mobile. I don't think I probably have to, to teach you about that. Um, and I imagine that most of you, like me, are, are using mobile every day. I do all my banking, my shopping. Um, not my dating anymore, that's, that's taken away from me, as you saw. Um, but, but it's what our users know, they, they, they're they on their devices all the time, it's, it's how they're comfortable now, it's, it's, it's just a piece of life. Um, and what have we got? Well, Salesforce have, have given us Salesforce One, and it's, it's pretty cool, it does a job to a certain point. Um, and Salesforce themselves have said that it's, when you, when you get to, to building an app that's, that's entirely bespoke, you've got to start thinking a bit more, and they've given you tools to do this. Um, you can't customize Salesforce One as your, your users might want. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is, is a couple of um, couple of success stories, or just uh, screenshots of, of some success stories, um, and then we're going to go into why it's hard and why it's risky and how it's difficult and to, to counter argue that. Um, here's an example app, um, mobile app for, with a Salesforce backend. This is a, an offline journey planner. As you can see, it's 100% bespoke UI, um, it looks pretty good, I think, personally. Uh, there's no sign of, of, of Salesforce in here. Here's another one. This is actually was, was built for um, diesel retail, um, and they had a core requirement that it had to work offline, um, including full edit update of records, creation, etc. And you couldn't do this with, with Salesforce One. It, was, it wasn't possible. Uh, they initially built this for the UK market, and now it's being rolled out across Europe because of its, its success so far. Here's another. This is a pretty cool UI. This is 
um, a community app. And uh, as you can see, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's no Salesforce branding at all on this, right from the app icon and out. Um, and this was a core requirement of the customer. They had to be able to do this. So Salesforce one is great. It will do certain things for you. But if you need to go to the next level, you need to break out. And Salesforce are OK with this. And that's why they have their um, mobile SDK to build bespoke applications. Um, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, hybrid. oh hybrid, hybrid apps, so, but, but, but you uh, download them from the uh, Play Store or iTunes or of Windows. I don't know what the Windows Store is called. Well, Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Someone can tell me if they're, they're still running that stuff. Um, but yeah, Windows support is, 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 is there as well with a Salesforce SDK. Um, and so if you're building, your, building a bespoke application, which is what you need to do, if you, if you, have, to, you have to deliver these requirements, so offline, um, and the, this complete customization, you, you, you need to move away. But if, you, if you're doing that, then you, you run into some gotchas. And that's really what I want to talk to you about is, is the, these hard points that you come across and how you can, how you can potentially overcome them, things to think about. Um, Salesforce One uh, obviously runs into this problem. Offline is like it's a big seller, isn't it? It's a big buzzword. Oh, we're going to have offline. And I think here I was just trying to edit my own my own record, probably trying to put my wage up or something. Um, and we've all seen this, but we need to get over offline. Um, and actually, we don't just need to think about offline, but we need to think about offline first. Because if you're, you're out in the field, um, your field engineers out there, and um, they need to edit these records, they don't just need to have the data, they need to have the logic. They need to have everything they could possibly do to continue their workflow without being interrupted. Because if they can't work, then then they're a waste of space. Um, the diesel app, for example, I, I, I showed this quick screenshot of. Um, their offline requirement came about because a lot of their stores are in, in basements, and they have zero um, mobile signal. And actually, even though they have corporate Wi-Fi, it's worse than no mobile signal, because it's kind of lying to you the whole time. It's, it's um, utterly ridiculous. Uh, and you just can't get away from that. So Salesforce give us their mobile SDK, um, and the company I work for, Mobile Caddy, we have a product on top of the SDK that allows you to get, to get over these things, allows you to implement offline and offline first. And you can do this, and that's great, and we've got a bit of success. But where it gets harder then is, is we've entered this Pandora's offline box, I like to call it, where it's, OK, so we can do offline, that's good. But now we've got to think about a conflict resolution. You've got Jane and Bob, and they both go off. They're field engineers, and they both update the same record, but they're both offline. Uh, Bob makes a change, two hours later, Jane makes a change, they're still both offline, and then either of them could come online at different times. We need to be able to reconcile that. We need to be able to work out, well, what do we do with that record? Both users changed it. Did they change the same fields? Who changed them last? All these complications begin to come out of the woodwork. Um, and what if Bob and Jane both updated this lead record and then Greg back in the office deleted the account or changed the sharing rules? And, it just becomes a, a headache, a cyclical a nightmare. So you've got to think about these things. These are real life scenarios that will, that will trip you up if you, don't, if you don't start keeping it in the mind at the design stage of your, of your app. Um, so app building is, is hard and, it, and it's risky if you get it wrong, but it's also ongoing. Um, delivering your version one app is pretty cool. Everyone's excited, they have a little party, and then suddenly you've got business requirements coming up. Um, Let's say somebody changed, oh, you've got a data model change. You've got a new branding guy comes in. Oh, yeah, scrap the red, scrap the red. We've got blue or pink or something. Um, and these things, these things come along. Stuff changes. Um, and we've got to be able to manage it. And these are, these are business requirements. They might be technology. You might get a new device in that's got a bigger screen size, the iPad Maxi 2 or something. And you're like, brilliant. We've got acres of space. We need to upgrade our apps to take care of this. Um, we haven't just delivered one app and we've gone. All these things are moving around it. And who's going to get these, these updates? Um, maybe you've got an update that you just want to push to your field staff. You don't want to push it to everybody. You might want to push it to your, your testing team first. Let them try it out. You've got to manage, manage this rollout. Um, how do you update it? What are you doing? Are you pushing updates to the app stores? Are you doing over-the-air updates? Um, what happens if you've got... Uh, I don't know, customers in, in the outback deserts of I don't know where, and they're not connected for days and weeks. You want to know who's updated, who hasn't updated. 
You need to be able to see all these things if your app is as important to your business as you think it is. It's got to be running. If the app's there and it's important, it needs to be running and you need to know why. Um, so stuff changes. Yeah, we need, we need to take care of that, but um, it's not always the stuff that's in our control either. So you might be happy. Yeah, we've launched version one. We haven't got a roadmap. We're cool. Everything's okay. Users are happy. But then Apple release iOS 9.0 and they break half the internet. They don't fix it because they don't care because they're Apple. Um, or Salesforce, um, in fact, they've just given us a bit, bit of breathing space, but they were dropping, I might get too technical, they're dropping uh, TLS 1.0, um, and that was gonna, meant you have to rebuild your apps. If you've built your apps, you need to rebuild them, taking into account that you've gotta be using TLS 1.1 or above. Um, they've now pushed that back to next year, so we get an extra year of space, because I think people weren't ready. Um, uh, it's, so it's been up to 2017. Yeah, which is good, because people have got more time. But these sort of things can come up and they're not in our control. So you need to be able to react. You need to be able to do these things. Um, maybe employees come and go. Um, you've got new starters. Okay, how do they get the app that's come in? Um, I don't know. Maybe Rachel, who used to be a sales, uh, uh, sales, oh, what are they called? A salesperson. Uh, they now become a sales manager. Do they want to have the same app as they had before? No, maybe not. They want to have a different view. They don't care about all this other stuff. We've got to, we've got to be able to adapt to our business um, because it's not just what we do that, that we've got control of. And when you're pushing apps, um, I don't know, has anyone ever tried pushing an app to the Apple Store? You have, yeah. Okay. Fun process. Fun process. So I, I actually took a, a video of the last Apple submission I did. Actually, this is one before the last Apple submission. Um, just to give those who haven't done it, what sort of process it's like. So I'll just, I'll just let you watch this a couple of times and let it sink in, because this is, this is what it's like. I'm not kidding. That's exactly how it feels to deal with Apple on a day-to-day -day basis. But then five days later, they tell you that it wasn't accepted because the laptop comes back at you. Yeah, exactly. It's... The whole thing is, is, is absolutely nuts. In fact, one, we submitted an app uh, through Apple and they rejected it because it, they said the description, the metadata, was linking to an external marketplace. And what it was is, in the description, we had blah, 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 client for salesforce.com. And the salesforce.com was, in their eyes, a link to a marketplace. So, yeah, you don't want to touch it. If you can, it's a pain in the rear. Um, and so, Mobile Caddy, we've got this saying that, that, that only the paranoid apps survive um, and what this has led us to is a is a is this kind of design principles that we we start with whenever we're going into an app this is this is our, our starting point here Moore's design we think M for mobile users these are these are all of our users actually within our orgs these aren't just the people out on the field with tablets and phones these are users on desktops who are traveling to and from meetings who are traveling abroad who are just commuting or, or whatever all of our users are mobile We've got to think offline first because connectivity can just disappear. Um, our users may be in places where there was never connectivity. We need to have that in mind. And with offline first, we also need to be robust because if our users are offline and they come back online, we need to be able to manage this. If the apps start dropping records because they've been offline and there's a conflict, you're losing data and that's losing money. You've got to, you've got to really be keen on this. And your apps need to be, um, they need to be efficient you don't want to be sending up 10,000 records and pulling down 10,000 records every time you come in and out of, 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 uh, of network coverage, for example. These, these could really hit you hard. Um, and the logic needs to be shared and separated with the platform. Uh, you can't have logic that resides on your platform that's not, not available on your mobile, um, because that means a use case potentially can't be filled. We need to, we need to cater for this. So we're... The kind of the, the, kind of the, the, the point of the talk really is to, is to think about, is to make sure that you're aware that these things can happen and, and leave you with some, some food for thought down here is, mobile is really, um, I suppose it's a, it's a, it's a must have. You, you've, you've got to be going mobile. If you're not already, then you will be in the next, in the next year or so. Um, but it's hard. It's, it's really, really, really hard. We, we spent a long time building tools, getting over these problems. Um, and there's a lot to think about. It's also risky, uh, if you don't do it right, yeah, you, you'll pay very quickly for it. Um, 
your version one, like I said, might be ideal, but version two may end up being a, a killer for you. Um, and that's where you've, you've got to think about the future. It's, it's not just drop one. Mobile is a, is a lifetime. You've got to think about, yeah, these things are going to change. The stuff you control can, 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 can change without you knowing about it uh, very quickly. Um, but there's, there is a success side. Like I said, some of the apps that, that demoed earlier, they, they really are a success story. And they're, they're building an advantage for themselves above the competition because they can, they can do these things. And you do it right, and you can get that advantage really quickly. Um, I'll give you an example. The, the, the diesel app we have has only been out for um, seven months, I think, in the field. And as well as rolling out now across Europe, they're actually on version 9, version 10, I think, of the app. Um, and this is because it's full of bugs. Um, it could have been, they could have been bugs, but most of it's because of, f of feedback from the user saying, this is brilliant, we can now do this. They're now able to, to, to undertake tasks that they were never able to even think about before. And from that, it's, it's spurred their own imagination. So they're coming back to the business saying, oh yeah, we love the app, but we want to be able to do X, Y, and Z as well. Or um, I tell you what, you thought we did our work in this way and it's not quite like that. Can, can we adapt? And, and having, having the ability to, 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 to maneuver and, and change like that is a, is a real bonus. So you need to be, um, yeah, you really need to be as paranoid as you can when it comes to, when it comes to your applications. That's, that's really um, all I've got for you today. Um, I'd like to thank you all for, for turning up, of course, and I'd like to thank London's Calling for, for having us all. Um,